it's time to change the oil on my 2008 Toyota Land Cruiser. I know that because I'm super in tune with my vehicles and I can sense it. Oh, and it also says so on the dashboard. So it's winter and we still have a little snow on the ground, but it's like 70 degrees, so it seems like the perfect day to change the oil. And first, I drove the car around for a bit, I got the engine up to temperature so hot oil will flow faster and easier. As you can probably tell, this Land Cruiser isn't entirely stock. I've done the Tundra front end lift, which consists of Tundra lower control arms and axles in addition to some SPC adjustable upper control arms, Bilstein 6112 coilovers, Tundra spacers, extended steel brake lines, and the rear's got OME springs and Fox 2.0 shocks with 10mm spacers and a Tough Dog adjustable pan hard bar. You may have also noticed the bud built sliders on the sides there. I've also installed an ARB skid plate system, but I digress. Okay, so as you can see, I've removed the front ARB skid plate so I can get access to the filter housing. Now what you see here in a minute is that the modifications that are actually relevant to this video include a Jowett Performance filter housing and easy drain valves on the filter housing and on the uh, drain pan. So Fumitomo also makes similar valves, but uh, I chose the easy drain valve and for honestly, I, I can't recall why at this point in time, but I think it was the way the uh, the drains were positioned and maybe the uh, the way the little lever was positioned to actually drain it. So Toyota uses a canister type of filter where you reuse the external canister um, and then you just change the filter cartridge that's inside. The stock filter that came with the Toyota Land Cruiser is actually made out of plastic and it required a special service tool to remove properly. Now, Toyota does make an aluminum unit that comes on vehicles like the Venza or something like that, uh, but that still also requires a special service tool, and it just wasn't quite as beefy as this. So here we can see the drain valve. Uh, so that's the drain oil drain pan right there, the oil pan with uh, the drain valve kind of on the left side. Now you can see that it is totally protected by the skid plate system which is one of the things I've kind of been uncomfortable with in the past with using these types of quick drain valves because they tend to hang down. So these valves also came with a little option which is this connector um, and you screw that into the valve and then you can run whatever length of tube you want right into your collection bin. Pretty darn handy and really clean. Okay, now it's time to drain the main vein here. Um, so I have got the little connector and tube connected to the, uh, the valve that's on the drain pan. It just screws right in. And then uh, we're gonna run that directly into our collection container. And so we're literally not gonna spill a drop of oil. It's amazing. So I'm gonna try to reach up here and flip the lever and you'll see dirty oil start to drain down and I'll usually let this run for at least 15-20 minutes or so. I'll try to find something else to do um, and let it drain. Uh, but when the oil is nice and hot, usually it's gone down to just like a trickle every once in a while, a tiny little drop. Okay, so once we're done draining the drain pan, we're going to use the same exact tube and a little threaded insert there, and we're going to thread that right into the filter housing easy drain. So I'm going to just thread that right in there and I'll snug it up in just a second. This is often one of the worst parts about changing uh, uh, or about draining you know, the, uh, the filter uh, on a stock unit uh, because there you have to use a little plastic insert and you pop it in there and oil just gets all over your hands. So this is an amazingly clean way to do this as well. So I just gave it a little snug there with an adjustable wrench which I don't normally use but I was feeling kind of lazy. Flip the lever and there's probably about a half a quart of oil, I would imagine, that comes out of there and again goes right in the drain pan. So when you order this uh, filter housing unit here, you have the option of ordering the easy drain valves and also this socket. And this is the mother of all sockets. It is huge. Um, so anyway, I went ahead and it was a couple bucks more, just ordered the socket. Um, I did line it with tape, uh, a little bit of uh, OCD there. Uh, just lined it with tape so I don't actually mar or scratch the uh, the filter housing because it's kind of like man jewelry. Anyway, I also got a hold of a label maker, which is just a fun toy anyway, and uh, wrote went ahead and wrote down the, uh, the foot-pounds of torque so that when I tighten it, um, I won't forget because I just have a terrible memory. 
Okay, so the filter that we're going to be using is a standard uh, stock Toyota element. Um, just bought that at the dealership. And Toyota Synthetic 0W20 motor oil. Now I always have a, a bin here you can see next to me uh, where I keep all any specific Toyota parts that I remove or spare parts that I have, washers, filters, those type of things in any um, you know funnels and things that I'll use and I mark the funnels so that I don't cross pollinate anything. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and put on our giant <laughs> socket and you notice this socket actually fits over the drain plug, um, the little easy plug, which is really nice. So you don't have to remove that. That's a one-time install. So we're just going to go ahead and remove that. And let's see here. So we've got the filter housing removed. And there it is. And you can see I got a little bit of oil just on the outside. Um, that just kind of tends to happen. So this is the messiest part of the whole job. Uh, and if you got a glove on or something like that, uh, even if you don't, you might have got a couple of drops of oil on you, but that's about it. So we're going to set it in here and just let that oil drain out into the collection pan. And then we'll go ahead and clean it up and install a new filter. So this filter housing, um, it's made out of billet aluminum, so it's machined out of a big chunk of aluminum. Uh, super high quality, you can just feel it. Um, and that's the easy drain plug, uh, very similar to Fumitomo, uh, but I think this one just stuck out a little bit shorter and that's why I selected it. So you'll also notice inside, um, so this thing uses the same, uh, what's that tube in there, the perforated tube that actually the filter slides onto. You reuse that part out of your stock Toyota um, filter housing, and the instructions uh, show you how to do that. Uh, so this is the standard filter. And so we're going to go ahead and clean this up here and put the new filter element in. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead, uh, I've got the new filter in, and I've put a little bit of fresh oil. Now pay attention to where that, uh, that fresh O-ring is too. So that's a new O-ring. It's got to be in that spot. You don't want it resting on that last shoulder. It's got to be in that one spot there. Okay, so now it's just as simple as fitting this back inside. I put a little oil on the threads as well as that O-ring and just screw it right in there. Exciting. So I just go hand tight uh, and then we're going to go ahead and put the socket on there and tighten it. Okay, after I got it as tight as I could by hand, I'm going to go ahead and set the uh, torque wrench to 18 foot-pounds of torque uh, after having just gotten it back from the U.S. Department of Weights and Measures. Uh, just kidding. Uh, we're going to go ahead and tighten it uh, until we get a nice click. And we know we're just at 18 foot-pounds, um, and then we're basically going to be done. So then we're going to fill up the vehicle. Uh, we'll look for any leaks, of course. And, uh, and then we'll have to put the skid plates back on, reset the trip uh, odometer, and uh, I mean the, uh, the oil change interval, and uh, take it for a test spin. Okay, as I mentioned, my memory is terrible. So I'm just verifying here what the capacity is of the, of the Land Cruiser. And with the filter, which is what we're uh, changing, it's uh, 7.4 quarts. Ah, look at that. So I was right. It's almost about a half a quart of oil that the filter holds. So, as I mentioned, uh, I just like to use a funnel for each given, you know, fluid. So I keep this in market oil, and that stays in my, uh, my handy little bin there. And we're going to go through 7.4 quarts of Toyota Synthetic 0W20 motor oil. All right. Now it's the... Pudding time, <laughs> truth in the in the pudding, or something like that. Anyway, so I've started it up, uh, and we're gonna sit there and let it run. I let it get up to temperature and look for some leaks. Hopefully, we don't see any. Okay, now we're inside the car, and we're gonna set or reset rather the oil service interval little dummy light that comes on on the dash. 
which you can actually set the interval that you want uh, through your navigation screen system. But So what we need to do is we put the car in the on position. So you hit the start button two times without having your foot on the uh, brake, otherwise it will start it. So you don't want to start the car. So once you have it in the on position, you hold the trip um, hold the, the trip button until you get to trip A. Once you have it on trip A, you go ahead and hit the button again to shut the vehicle off. Sorry about the camera work. <laughs> I need another hand. Then you're, while you're still holding that trip button, you go ahead and do the same thing. Put the vehicle in the run position. So you're hitting the button two times without putting your foot on the brake. And you can see that the oil maintenance reset it happens kind of by itself there and it's done then you can let go you can shut the car off and uh, and then if you want you can get back in here into your nav system you saw that kind of oil interval and you can enter the information that you want you know how many miles uh, between your next oil change uh, that you'd like um, you know uh, for me it depends uh, I typically run about 5,000 miles between oil changes unless I'm doing you know any hardcore for wheeling in the desert um, and or if I start to do some light towing duty that I might change it more often. We'll see. And oh my goodness, we are almost done. So the last thing to do is I like to collect all the bottles, throw them in the recycling bin, and then I usually like to take the, uh, as I take you know the, the vehicle on another quick little run just to make sure everything is, is fine, I'll go ahead and take the oil with me and uh, take it to my local uh, like AutoZone or uh, you know auto parts store and uh, recycle it. That way, the next time I do an oil change, I don't end up having a full oil collection canister, which has happened a couple of times, which is really kind of a bummer. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video, and if you have any questions, please leave a note below. Thanks.